Yay! Yay! Now let's look at the potential that you get from point charges. Let's see how to calculate that. Uh, the nice thing is that it's really easy. Um, suppose I have two point charges. Um, one's at the origin, plus two, and then another one is three centimeters away. Um, that's minus one nanocoulombs. Um, I'm going to figure out what the potential is, the electric potential at two points. There's P1 and P2. So uh, here's the way it goes. Uh, the potential at one, uh, it's just like the electric field. We just do each one independently. So it's just going to be, remember the, the equation is KQ over R, right? So it's just KQ1 divided by the distance. Uh, out to point one. And remember that th there's no vector to this. All right, potential, this is all just numbers. Um, so that's nice, there's no components. This is gonna be really easy. Uh, and then I just add KQ2 over R2. I just add the numbers. Um, okay, so let's see what we get. So this is gonna be nine times 10 to the ninth. Uh, Q1, what the heck is that? My, uh, uh, two. 2 times 10 to the minus 9. Uh, that distance is 4 centimeters, 0 0.04, because we want volts at the end. That's an SI unit. Uh, and then I got minus, because the other charge is negative. 9 times 10 to the ninth. 1 times 10 to the minus 9. Uh, what is that distance? It's 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be 0 0.05. And what do I get? Uh, 18 divided by 0.04. Uh, what is that going to be? Four. Let's see. You plug these in, you get 450. 450 volts minus, uh, what's that? Nine divided by 0.4, 180 volts. So at P1, the voltage, the potential at P1 is 270 volts. Um, easy, right? No, no components. That's that's really cool. Uh, how about V two? The potential at point two. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, I'll shorten it up just a little bit. Uh, now the distances are a little bit different. R one is now five, and R two is now four. So K times Q. So that's going to be eighteen over point oh five minus. 9 over 0.04. Uh, so let's see, this is going to be 360 volts divided by uh, or minus 225 volts. Uh, so what is that? 135 volts. Okay, so there's the potential at points one and two. Very, very simple. So if you have a whole bunch of charges and you want to figure out the potential due to a whole bunch of charges, it's easy. You just do KQ over R for each one. Uh, and then you just add them all up. Um, can you get a negative voltage? Sure you can. That's 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 just fine. Um, what is the change of voltage? Often we're going to be asking for something like this. Suppose I go from P1 to P2. What is the change of voltage going from P1 to P2? Um, so the change of voltage from 1 to 2 is just, um, well, it's just V2 minus V1. Right, the delta is always final minus initial. So that is um, minus 135 volts, which kind of makes sense. How much has the voltage changed if you go from one to the other? It's gone down 135. It's gone from 270 to 135. Uh, that makes total sense. Okay, um, here's something else we can do now. Um, there's a relationship between, this is where we, tend to tie these things together. There's a relationship between the voltage and the electric field. Uh, let's tie together something that we've had before. So these charges generate um, numbers all over space, um, which is the voltages. And you've seen before that they also generate arrows. They generate the electric fields. Um, but those two things are related to each other. And they're related to each other like this. Um, the electric fields point downhill. What we like to think of is these potentials are sort of like a height in some abstract space, like a height map. So at P1, the height is like 270 
and at P2, the height is like 135. So we've gone downhill from P1 to P2. You've gone from a height of 270 to a height of 135. Um, in, in, in fact, we usually use language uh, that sounds very much like that, higher potential to lower potential. So what happens is that the electric field is just equal to minus, in this case, the change of the potential divided by the change in distance. This is going to be the X component of the electric field is going to be like this. So what's the electric field? If I know the voltages at P1 and P2, I can figure out what the electric field, the average electric field between those two points is. Because that's just going to be minus delta V. Well, that's just going to be minus a minus 135. I've already figured out delta V. Divided by delta X. What's delta X? Um, 3, right? So divided by 0.03. And if you do this, you should get like 4,500 volts per meter. So the electric field is positive. The X component of the electric field anyway is positive and directed that way. And its magnitude is 4,500. It used to be that we would call it Newtons per Coulomb. But the equivalent unit uh, volts per meter is the same as Newtons per Coulomb. That's not an obvious thing, but you can sort of go and work it out. Um, so the electric field, notice that it's positive. And the reason that it's positive is because of this negative sign you always have to include whenever you figure this out, because the change in V over the change in X tells you the slope, and the negative tells you that it's downhill. So the electric field always points downhill. Um, it go, electric field always points from the higher potential to the lower potential. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, here's something else we can do. Uh, what happens if I place uh, a charge? Uh, let's do it over here. If we place a plus one nanocoulomb charge at P1, and then we let it go. Let's keep the other two steady. So if we place a charge there and let it go, um, it's going to run off to infinity. But when it runs off to infinity, what that means is whatever potential energy it has at P1, it's going to use up as kinetic there at the end um, when it's infinitely far away. So what we can say is the kinetic energy is just equal to the potential that it has initially. And the potential it has initially is just that charge times the voltage at that spot. We've already figured out the voltage at that spot. So if we multiply by a charge that sits there, we get the energy. This is very much like, by the way, force is, remember, force is QE. We said that there was some local electric field, and then you plug a charge in there, and then it feels a force. So this is almost the same thing except it's energy. So instead of the electric field, the equivalent is the voltage. There's a voltage at every point in space, a number, and when we put the charge there, we multiply by that charge, and what we get is the, it turns out, it's the energy. It's the potential energy. That's cool. So one half mv squared is equal to q times the voltage. So the speed that it has far away is just going to be 2QV divided by M. I didn't tell you M. Let's suppose just for kicks, M is 1 gram. Just you can do the calculation yourself. And when you plug these numbers in, uh, what you're going to get is something like 2.3 centimeters per second. Not terribly fast. Um, and that's when it's infinitely far away. So it'll speed up. And then when it's infinitely far away, it's going to have that sort of limiting speed. Uh, there at the end. But the most important part, I think, to take away from doing all this is the concept of higher and lower potentials and that the electric field always points downhill.